Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to That Sewing Blab. We are at episode 89. Can you all believe that? We're going to have a wonderful and fabulous show tonight. And I just want to get started by saying welcome to everyone who's here and a special welcome to all of our new viewers. And this is your first time here. For those who don't know, um, I am the co-host of the show. My name is Myra Rentmeester with Simple Inspiration. And our host tonight is Dawn Pengallian, the red, <laughs> the lovely woman in the red from Dueling Designs. Now, um, because you're new here, I just want to explain a little bit about the questions and how they work. If you have a question for either us or our guest tonight, that beautiful woman right there in the white shirt, we'll get to her later. Just go below where you see that link that says, ask a question, hit that link and post your question there. You also can post your question in the navigation bar, the comment section to your right, but make sure you put a question mark there. And if you get a pop-up, Say, go ahead and select post so it will go down in the question box and we won't miss your questions. So now with um, that said, I just want to talk to some of the newer people because this is going to be uh, replayed on Crowdcast and it's also going to be uploaded for replay on YouTube. But it's really important if you can get an opportunity to come into our live stream so you can actually ask questions on the live stream of our guests and you can get them answered immediately. Plus sometimes we actually have prizes for the guests who are actually on live stream. So it's beneficial for you to join us during the live stream if you can. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass this over to our lovely host Dawn tonight so she can introduce our guests and we can get this party started. Thanks again for joining us. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's going to be a fantastic show tonight. We have a very lovely guest on tonight. Um, uh, yes, so introducing this week's guest. Uh, oh, goodness, it's, it's, it's exciting, I think, and because um, a lot of the time when we interview people, um, they're like uh, new bloggers and things, which is a very cool angle, you know, how did they get where they are and things. But this is someone who has been in the industry for quite a while um, and been just knocking it out of the park. Um, just fantastic. So Glenda Sparling, she yes. is, um, <clears throat> I have a whole bunch of notes. So <laughs> Me too. she's the president and CEO of Sure Fit Designs. This is uh, one oh of my. the- you have a very, very old kit there, Don. <laughs> President and CEO of, of Surefit Designs. Um, and now this is, an, it's an international company. This is one of the reasons why I say it's very interesting talking to Glenda, because it's, it's um, often we get people kind of on YouTube or bloggers, but this is a, a, an actual, you know, it, not quite bricks and mortar store, but you know, having actual product as well as having digital stuff. So it's, she's quite the businesswoman. And um, her SureFit Designs is a company that specializes in pattern, uh, pattern fitting, designing, and sewing. And I was writing down some words that make me think of kind of Glenda, like for example, hearing her a bit of her story, which we're gonna hear tonight. Longevity was one thing that really struck me. Um, she's been in the business for 35 years, I, I believe. Wow. Like, and that, that's amazing. Um, not only to be sewing for that long, because people go in and out of sewing sometimes, um, but to be, actually have a business going and a successful business. Um, you know, it's successful because one, she's still doing it, and two, you should have seen some of the comments we were getting before the show even started. Very satisfied clients. So Another glad. word, Oh, yeah. Another word is communication. One thing I got from talking um, to Glenda, and I'm sure anyone watching tonight will see it, she has a uh, just a rabid desire to make sure that everyone gets exactly what they want. So customer service is huge for her. She really, yeah. her and her distributors are really into making sure that when you buy something, it works for you. This is not something that's going to sit on her shelf. She's dedicated to doing that. And that was my next word, a dedicated businesswoman. Um, she has three websites. Uh, she does videos, live streams, recorded videos. Like she, she does tons of stuff. Like there is a lot of free content and paid content that you can't miss out on. <clears throat> um, she's also um, very, I'd say specialized was another word because often when you buy a pattern or uh, 
a sewing thing. It doesn't fit exactly your body. And, and this is something that's very important to her. You can tell because it's right in the name, Sure Fit Designs. She wants it to fit your body perfectly. And that's why that word came to mind. So I cannot thank Glenda enough for coming on tonight. We can't wait to learn more about the woman behind the business and also about her business. So thank you, Glenda. Thank you. Yes. It's an honor to be with both of you this evening. Thank you. Okay. We are we ready I, to <laughs> can I go ahead and show you what the current pant kit looks like? Now that, yes. now that Dawn has shown you what the one back from 1982 looks like. So <laughs> here's what oh, it currently looks like. That's a big we've gone difference. Through, we've gone through a number of transitions in the face of the product. But what's really interesting is that what's inside the kit is still basically the same. So what we've been offering the home seamstress since 1982 still fits. It worked then, it works now. And there's been additions, there's been some changes. I've rewritten the instruction books. The, the instructions are perhaps a little clearer. Um, we had hired an artist, um, another artist a couple of years ago and the illustrations, we just went off. Oh my God, this is so easy now to follow along. So the um, we've updated over the last 35 years, but what is really interesting, as I said, the patterns are still basically the same patterns that we had in 1982. And Dawn mentioned about our customer service, even before the internet, if people had fitting issues, they could pick up the telephone and call me and wow. I was always happy to help them. So it's just, um, it's exciting to be here today. Oh, wow. That's just fabulous. Oh, my gosh. And like Dawn said, the comments that were waiting for us when we got in here are just an amazing testament to your customer service and the people Thank really you. being satisfied. So that's Thank awesome. You. And definitely applaud you on that one. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so Shall one of the do you want to ask the first question? We have a regular first question here. I'll let you, I'll let you go because usually I do, but I'll let you do it. <laughs> We were just curious what your what started you sewing? Yeah. Oh gosh, that was my and, and it's a hands down answer. My seventh grade home economics teacher. I absolutely loved her. And you know what's really interesting wow. is I don't remember her name, but I can remember her face. Wow. And she was always so pleasant, so encouraging to all of us students. And when I started it, it, it doing the, you know, the hand eye thing. It was just like, I can take this flat piece of fabric and I can convert it into the old basic apron, which was our very first project. I even loved doing the apron. I really did. And then my girlfriend and I, we, the next project was the gathered skirt and she got a gold gingham check and I got the green gingham check and we made matching skirts and I mean, to look back on them today, I'm just like, oh, my goodness, they were <laughs> on the ugly side. But we were so proud of our work, you know, and um, even in the in the cooking part of my home economics classes, I just loved everything about it. I wanted to go home and I wanted to cook everything for my family. And then I would, you know, say, Dad, you know, I need to get some fabric because I, I want to sew something more. And my parents were very, very um, supportive of me in all of my endeavors. And so it actually started in grade seven. But if you don't mind, I'm going to tell a little story about my grade nine graduation dress because I was so proud of my my ability and my skills that I'd learned over the, the two years in grade seven and eight. And so for my grade nine graduation present, my father bought me my first Singer sewing machine, you know, one of those little brown Ooh. ones. Uh -huh. And um, we weren't really particularly well off. And, and this, that's a significant uh, part of this little story. I went out and bought some fabric, some white fabric, because all the girls wore white to their, their graduation. And my dress was a fitted bodice. So it had a million darts everywhere <laughs> and then a full skirt. And I thought, oh, gosh, marking those darts, I know what I will use is bright red tracing carbon. <laughs> I know, Myra, but I didn't know that until afterward. So here I am, the white fabric, <laughs> the red marking trace, and I am like going to town marking the darts. And oh, oh yeah. 
And as I started sewing the darts in place, of course, the red carbon and the, with the waxy kind started to spread on the fabric. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And um, it, it just, it was an absolute mess. And I'm, I'm going, mom, what am I going to do? You know, I mean, we couldn't afford to go out and get any more fabric. I had to wear this dress. So we took the bodice and we washed it. And so from now being a white bodice with red streaks on it, now it was a pink bodice. Because <laughs> all of the color, just all distributed. And then I sewed the white skirt in place. And that is what I wore for my grade nine graduation was my pink Aww. top and my white skirt. And I felt really, really bad about it. But you know, I learned a lesson <laughs> that you <laughs> yeah. never, ever want to use these brilliant colors of marketing <laughs> paper on white fabric. And, you know, it's kind of interesting. I'm, I'm sharing this story, but um, when I read my Facebook group and ladies come in and they said, well, I just created another water and in the garbage can it goes. And somebody else will chime in and say, you know, those are the experiences that help us grow and learn and become better at what we do. And one lady, I love this little analogy. She said, just because you burn a batch of cookies, does that mean you're going to start stop baking cookies? <laughs> I thought, true. You know, how true is that? You know, it just, so our mistakes help us grow. They help us learn. And as mm -hmm. long as we don't let the initial discouragement get us down, then we move forward with, with our, with our learning, with our skill. So that's oh a little God, bit of history yeah. about me and my graduation dress and how I got started. <laughs> well, what an adorable story. And, it, you know, and it just goes to, I was talking with someone else. Actually, this lady is in the UK. And um, sewing, for some reason, I'm, I'm really surprised to hear you say that. And I know that you actually have um, businesses out there. Um, she said that it's um, a dying art in the UK. Mm -hmm. And... You know, and one of the things that we all learn, all of us, um, I did. I had home economics. That's what started me sewing. You know, I started sewing on my hand when I was about 13 from a Barbie doll. But I continued on in school because they had home ec and I loved it. But they don't have that anymore no, for the don't. young people. And that's sad because we have all of these beautiful women out here, all ages, all ages, who are actually, um, who are actually, um, I, I'm sorry, I just saw someone say they didn't have video, they need to refresh. But um, they have all of these people out here who actually re really love to learn how to sew. And I just think it's a travesty. But um, going back to your questions, I know you mentioned about seventh and eighth grade and you started sewing, but are you um, totally self-taught sewing or did you further education in um i i actually am self-taught from that point on when i went into high school wow. um i actually uh had to change high schools and they didn't have a, a home economics program there or at least i'm i'm wrong i think i got it for one year and then i yeah. moved into an academic high school and they didn't have any home economics there but um Somewhere along the line, I knew that that's what I wanted to do and focus my career in is the home economics field. And so um, uh, when I graduated from high school, I went into university straight away and mm -hmm. I started taking a BSc in home economics. So mm -hmm. I, I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, I just knew that I really, really loved what I was doing. And so that's how I started off was at the University in Calgary. And for some of your viewers who aren't uh, aware of my background, I actually am Canadian and I grew up in Calgary. Ah. <laughs> God, you're living in, in uh, Ottawa now, isn't it? Ottawa, is, you tell me? Yeah. 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 And, um, so uh, I went, my first university was in Calgary and I went there for one year. And then where they had the home economics program was in Edmonton, Alberta. So in my second year, I moved north and uh, took my last couple of years there. But um, I know I don't know if it's premature to tell this little story, Don, about how I became a teacher. But we talked about it when, when yeah, we did yeah. our little review. So 
I didn't know I wanted to be a teacher. In fact, the last thing in the world I thought I wanted to be was a teacher. I didn't know what I wanted to do in the home, home economics field, but teaching wasn't one of them. And um, so here we are in our home economics classes. This is my second year of university now. And one of our professors sat all of us girls down one day and said, girls, I need to tell you something. You are not going to get a job when you graduate from this program. And I went, oh my God, what do you mean I'm not gonna get a job when I graduate? My father had agreed to pay for my education as long as I got a job at the end. And if I didn't get a job, then I had to pay it all back. And oh when, my. <laughs> and I, I honestly, I was so incredibly upset. So after this class, I went back to the dorm. I was living with a roommate at that period in time. And I was crying. I was so terribly upset. And my roommate said to me, Glenda, what's the matter? I said, I've just been told I am not going to get a job when I graduate from this BSc home economics program, and I'm going to have to pay my dad back. I just don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> and so she said, Glenda, become a teacher. She was uh, studying for um, elementary education. And I said, Kathy, I have never wanted to be a teacher in my entire <laughs> life. And she said, well, you got to think about it, Glenda, because they need home economics teachers. And so I went to bed extremely upset. I woke up the next morning, I went to the registrar's office and I said, I want to switch my major. I'm going to now become a home economics teacher. So I'm going from a BSc in home economics to a B.Ed. with a major in home economics. And I literally switched that fast. I ended up having to pick up a couple of education classes um, and that I did during the summer. But from that point on, I now then was working towards getting a, a degree, um, my Bachelor of Education degree. And so I did that. And my first job was as a junior high home economics teacher in the county of Strathcona, just outside of Edmonton, Alberta. And uh, that was a really, really interesting experience because I graduated uh, from university when I was barely 20 years old. And I looked like I was still 14. And now I'm teaching <laughs> kids who look exactly the same as me, you know. And so it was certainly very, very challenging. But I spent five years uh, teaching um, junior high home ec. And then from there, I switched over to um, uh, senior high. But also there was a life change for me. And I moved from the Edmonton area back down into the Calgary area. And when I went down there, uh, back down to Calgary, um, I didn't I didn't have a job initially at the beginning of the year. And so I was doing some substitute teaching and I worked in a special ed class and that was very, very interesting. It was very challenging for me, but a real eye opener to work with these special needs students. And um, I learned a lot in the process. And one day, my home economic supervisor uh, came to me and said, Glenda, we have a new position that's going to be open in Southern Alberta for a home economics consultant. Would you like to consider mm -hmm. applying for it? And I went, oh my God, I'm like, a, at this point, I think <laughs> I was 26 years old. And I said, what do I know about teaching and working with other home economics teachers who've been you know, teaching for years and years and years. But at this point, I'd been working on my master's degree and I'd written um, a program on, um, on uh, family education as well as working in the clothing field. And I said, sure, I'll go ahead and apply for the job. So I was seconded to the government in Alberta and became um, the Southern Alberta Home Economics Consultant. And it was during that experience that I was working with adults now. And I realized that that's where my niche in this teaching world lay is with working with adults. And mm. so that was kind of the, the transition from me never wanting to be a teacher to now I knew where I really wanted to be. And so I finished off my work there. And in the process of doing that, this is another little personal story, but I wanted to finish up my, I wanted to finish up my master's degree 
And mm -hmm. one of my colleagues had told me, you know, an easy place to get your degree finished up is in Eugene, Oregon, <laughs> because they have a, <laughs> um, a school, an education school down there that's a, a recognized degree in Canada. So I came down to Eugene and um, finished off my master's degree. And that's where I met my husband and then so moved to Eugene. So that's how I ended up here in the United States. We've now been going on, I think we're heading into our 38th wedding anniversary this year. Oh, so congratulations. And got imported into the United States. <laughs> <laughs> but, and I love what I do. I love what I do. I, you know, I've been working with adults now ever since I was about 26 years old. And it's just been an absolutely great career for me. I feel so fortunate because I, I truly am one of those very, very lucky ladies who's, who turned my initial hobby into a career. And it's been my career for my entire lifetime. So wow, it's been great. What an awesome story. And that, you know, that is such a story that it actually works right into my next question that I was going to ask is what inspired you to start your business? Because you already talked about how you got into teaching, but now it's a full fledged, huge <laughs> business. I mean, how did you move from teaching into now a, a business, an actual well, business? Um, that also has some interesting aspects to that story. When I moved to Oregon, um, and I started applying for teaching jobs. At this point in time, I had been teaching for um, eight years. I had been seconded to the government and I had done that for two years. And I also had a, a B ed and a master's degree in education with my specialty in home economics. So when I married Wes and moved here to the United States, they wanted me to go back to school and get more home economics and education courses in Oregon. And I said, to heck with that noise. I'm credentialed, I'm experienced. Yeah. And furthermore, they were gonna cut my salary by easily half from what I was earning up in Canada. And they wanted me to go and get more education classes. And um, where the home economics program is in Oregon is 45 minutes north of us in a city called Corvallis. And I didn't want to commute because our home here is in Eugene. So many of you who are listening have heard about Stretch and Sew. And Stretch and Sew was a company that was started by Ann Person here in Eugene, Oregon. And her headquarters were just in, in over in West Eugene. And so one day I went knocking on her door and I applied for a job as an education specialist with Stretch and Sew. And I actually did that uh, for a couple of years. And then um, they asked me to run their R&D department and I went and moved into that position as well. And one of the things that they needed for their company was a, um, fitting system to help the you know their patterns to fit properly so um that's what i developed for them was a program called alter ease and then in that period of time Anne person and her husband were having some difficulties personally and and financially and it's also at the same time when the entire sewing industry switched from sewing with knit fabrics to sewing with woven fabrics. So there was a lot of transition happening in the sewing industry itself. Ann Person did a lot of downsizing and um, I happened to be one of the, the casualties that was downsized. And so um, my in discussion with my husband, we said, well, you know, what would I like to do? And I said, I'd like to stay in the sewing industry. And one of the needs that I saw was that there was a big need for um, patterns that really fit. So we went off on our own and, and Sherfa Designs basically is an amalgamation of the um, experiences that I've had in the sewing industry. And mm. that's how it all started. So wow. from Stretch and wow. Sew, I went off on my own. Well, you've had a, an adventure. 35 years, yes, <laughs> to say yes, the least. I really have. I really have. It's taken us all over the world. Um, the uh, We had a wholly owned subsidiary in Canada. 
And then after that, we went uh, down to Australia and marketed yeah. in Australia. And we also had a wholly owned subsidiary there. And this is all way prior to the internet. You know, there was no YouTube, there was, there was no nothing. And so we traveled for 20 years, um, going to different countries, as well as obviously uh, teaching SureFit Designs here in the United States. And um, then after, gosh, 20 or 25 years of living in an airplane, it was, it wow. was time, I was, I was done and um, decided that I needed a bit of a break. So we actually retired uh, when I was in, I hate to say this, when I was in my early 50s, so that seems like ages and ages ago, but we retired and we built a new home. And then I decided that I was gonna sew all of the draperies and all of the accoutrements for my home. And that was a nice break for me. And um, then in 2010, we decided, I won't say it, we decided, I was actually remodeling the house. And Wes said, you know, enough remodeling, go and find something else. <laughs> and, and so I just, I couldn't believe this. One of the friends of mine at my gym said to me, why don't you go down to our sewing room? It's a studio down in Springfield. Springfield, for those of you who don't know where I come from, I-5, Interstate 5, runs north and south between California Oregon and Washington. And Eugene is on one side of I-5 and the sister city is Springfield. And in Springfield, there was um, a woman who started up a sewing studio called Our Sewing Room. And her name is Mary Jo. And my friend at the gym said, why don't you go talk to Mary Jo? I'm sure she'd love to have some fitting classes at our sewing room. And so one day I, I went in to meet Mary Jo, introduced myself to her. And I told her a bit about my background and I said, you know, my husband has told me I've got to go find something else to do. So how about if we have some fitting classes down here in our sewing room? And she was just absolutely excited. Their, her business then, having this beautiful, beautiful sewing studio, had only been open for about a year. And it was still, you know, they were building their clientele up. And so I started renting the facility from her and offering fit and sew retreats here and um, that's how my fit and sew retreat program got started was from this exposure with her and that's where i still do the retreats today uh <clears throat> excuse me mary Jo is just an absolutely delightful lady and they have this unbelievable studio with high ceilings and beautiful lighting and great windows high tables high cutting tables nobody has to bend too far to to cut out their fabric and they're big. And then there's sewing machines in there and you can go and rent a sewing machine and sew there all day long if you want to. A lot of quilting happens there as well. And then when I do my fitting retreats, I just rent out the entire facility and um, my retreats are usually six days long. And so I, wow, you know, I wow. have a facility to myself so, and all my, <laughs> my students who come. So it's absolutely great. Anyway, so, that's how then I went back into business in 2010. And I should say, that's when we digitized the product. That's um, when we went from an analog uh, pattern kit to a digital pattern kit. When I say digital, the big master patterns, those of you who know about SureFit Designs, the patterns are very, very large because they're, they're full size pattern, full body size pattern. Dawn has one there. You can see her opening pattern sheet. They're huge. They're huge patterns. Oh, okay. Okay. Wow. There you go. Yep, that's that's okay, the still there. Up, sideways, upside down, and backward. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. So they're huge patterns. But what we did was we took those patterns and we digitized them so that we could then take them to a local printer and, and start printing them again. And so mm -hmm. even though they are digitized, one thing I should say is that I don't offer them in a PDF format. And the reason is that I don't want people to be having to print that large pattern out on eight and a half by 11 sheets and have to be taping them all together. Because one of the things about SureFit Designs is that we pride ourselves in the accuracy of the pattern. And so I don't want somebody having to tape, you know, 10 different sheets together and get it incorrect. And then they sew up or they draw off their pattern and sew it up and they come, Glenda, it doesn't right. fit me. 
And then I have to go back to the beginning and say, well, how did you tape your pattern together and all of that kind of thing. So our patterns are still sold in a large paper format. That's what's, that's what's, that's what they get in the kit these days. But when I say we've digitized everything, we've made it easier for the printer to take the digital file and then, you know, to print it out uh, for us. And um, of course we now have a, what I call downloadable fashion leaflets. So any new fashion leaflets that I make are gonna go online. And those are PDF documents that don't need to be taped together, excuse me, together. What they do is they assume that the seamstress has her body blueprint all completely done. And then what my fashion leaflets do is show you how to take your body blueprint and then design with it and how to sew it together. So I kind of got off track there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it does get into something interesting, interesting though. Um, um, for anyone who hasn't, hasn't seen, seen one of your one kits, kits, can you maybe explain what they do and what makes your system your system? Well, first of all, um, the accuracy in the pattern. Um, within the pattern, it is graded and it's graded according to your actual body measurement. So you don't have to worry about being any size anymore. You're not a size designation. You're whatever your circumferences and your lengths are. And so um, these patterns are graded according to your body measurement. So if you're 40 inches around in the bust, that's the dot you're going to mark off is the 40 inch dot. And if your waist is 32, you mark off your 32 dot. If your waist is 28, you mark off the 28 dot. If your waist is 42, you mark off the 42 dot. And so you do that in the respective areas of armholes, bust, waist, hip, high, well, high hip and low hip. And then you connect your dots together and that uh, connecting is what I call drawing your body blueprint. And when it's all done, this blueprint is a reflection of your body shape. So right off the bat, you're starting off with a pattern that is as pretty darn close to the shape of your body as we can get in a flat pattern format. And it's because you're using your lengths and your circumferences to draw and connect your dots all together. And then within this pattern, it also has ease built into it. So I'll use um, the measurement, um, bus measurement of 40 as an example again. So in the dress pattern, uh, there's two and a half inches of ease in the bust line. So if you're 40 inches around in the bust and you mark off the 40 inch dot, when you finish um, drawing off your front and your back pattern, and you measure from underarm point to underarm point in the front, and then underarm point to underarm point in the back, and you add those two together, you're going to end up with a pattern that measures 42 and a half inches. So the pattern is totally accurate like that. And then in the waist, there's one inch of ease, and in the low hip, there's three inches of ease. And so this wearing ease is built in. And I should also just say, when I, when I call a body blueprint, in the industry, it's called the sloper. And a oh, sloper yeah. means that it has wearing ease in it. And some people will actually say, I don't want any ease. If they don't want any ease because they want a snug-fitting, form-fitting garment, then that's called a moulage. And that has no ease whatsoever mm -hmm. in it. I don't recommend people doing that initially. Um, but... Sometimes women want to just go right to like um, a form fitting uh, evening gown. And so they, you, you basically don't want any ease in that. But even for that, I have instructions on how to remove the ease to create a very small or snug fitting bodice um, so that, you know, you remove the ease so that if it's a strapless garment, that the, it'll stay up. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so sure fit designs will do this. It's, you use your specific measurements. And that's why it doesn't matter what shape or size the person is, um, whether and and the size range. Uh, here I am using that word size because it's so ingrained in in so many people's brains. But it's you use the measurement range, and the measurement range goes as small as 28 inches around, 
in the bus line up to 62 inches around. So we have lots and lots of choices for people to be whatever measurement that they physically are. And um, one thing I should say is that you can use this pattern kit over and over for a lifetime. And Dawn is a really good example of this because her kit likely dates back to about 1982 or 1983. <laughs> and I can tell that by the packaging, excuse me. And um, she can use that same kit today, 35 years later. Our bodies change as we age, but the, the master patterns really haven't changed. I've added to them, but not changed them. I, so, I think it's important to note that even though it says pants kit, it's not one pair of pants too. Like I, that's people, a really might think, people might think they're only getting one thing. Like you have other kits as well. Um, there's a whole gigantic list. I wouldn't, I'll just mention a couple. I don't want to think the sure, dress, please. the pants, the shirt, the children's kit. And mm -hmm. it's not like if you have this, you're only going to make one pair of trousers. Can you explain what, what the magic in that is that it has more variants? Oh, sure. Absolutely. In fact, that's a really interesting segue into the fact that we're actually changing the cover of our envelopes now because we want the envelope cover to say what it does inside. What do you get inside this kit? And so it's going to, it's really a, a very, very cool cover. And we've been working on this. And I, I honestly, I have to, oh, great, perfect. I have to thank all of our Facebook um, group members who I posted, oh, about a month ago that we were in the process of thinking about changing the cover to be more reflective of what you're actually going to get inside the kit. And I am so grateful for all of the responses that I got because it basically came down to, we don't necessarily need artwork per se. We need to know what we're getting when we purchase a SureFit Designs kit, whether it's the pant kit, dress kit, shirt kit, or children's kit. So here you can see now in this new cover, um, it tells you, you can make jeans, you can do leggings, you can do casual pants, you can do trousers or slacks, a more dressy style of pant. Um, you can do pull on pants. So for the ladies who just want to have an elastic style of waistline, they don't want any darts, they don't want any zippers. Um, pull on pants are really super simple. And there's all kinds of women who never, ever wear their pants at their waistline. And so we've got our low, uh, low rise pant that you can do as well by cutting down the waistline. We can do pajama pants and we can also do capris. And that's just the short list of the yeah. number of things that you can do with one pant pattern. And so every kit comes with a complete instruction book. And the um, essence of that book is it's going to show you how to, that's the old, or I won't say that's the old, that's the current envelope that's on the pant kit. Now, within that kit, you're going to get a complete instruction book, and it's going to show you how to measure and how to draw off your pattern. And then um, the entire remainder of the book is how to do all of these different designs. So you're not limited to one basic pair of pants or one basic blouse. You're going to be able to design literally whatever you want. And in fact, uh, in my Facebook group, one of the one recent lady just put up a, a photograph of all the old kits like Dawn has. They were Fuchsia was the, the dress kit, and then yellow was the pant kit, green was the children's kit, and blue was the shirt kit. And she put them up and she said, my kits date back to 1982. And um, <laughs> one other of the group members piped, piped in and said, can I make current fashions with that today? And I had a little chuckle and I said, yes, absolutely you can. Because once your body blueprint fits you, it doesn't matter what you design, of course, it can be current fashion and it can be classic fashion. You can design whatever you want to, no matter what fashion is offering. And one of the things that I absolutely love for my customers to do is send me in ideas of new designs that you'd like to see turned into our fashion leaflets, because it's the inspiration that I get from my customers that give us all kinds of, of um, uh, ideas to go forward with our our fashion designs and leaflets. So it's been fun. Wow. And this one is the, the oh, there's a dress, dress kit, right? 
there's the new dress kit cover, right? Yep, that's the dress kit. And it shows all the different templates and everything you're going to get in that one. And again, a short list of dresses and gowns and t-shirts and tops, blouses, jackets, skirts, coats. All of that can be done from that single dress kit. Oh, and you know, I should say that I use that word dress kit very loosely and liberally. When, when a kit like this will do so much, it was hard to determine what to call it. So this mm. just became the dress kit. But um, dresses, blouses, jackets, coats, one-piece dresses, two-piece dresses, you name it, it can be done from within the dress kit. Now, I should explain the difference between the dress kit and the shirt kit is that the shirt kit does not have a bust-fitting dart. And the dress kit does. The dress kit gives you what I call the adjust a bust template. And that adjust a bust template gives you an A, B, C, D, double D, and E cup bra shape. And so the template gets wider or the dart shape on the template gets wider as your bust gets bigger. And then for anybody who's bigger than an E cup bra shape, then I have instructions in our learning center on how to add extra mylar or plastic or paper to the adjust the bust template and then you can keep going out and making that dart wider and wider and wider and i've had ladies who have been f and g and j cup shapes who have been very very successful in ma making a wider dart putting it into their bodice and shaping a top for themselves that they've never been able to have a good fit in before because this template will give them that excellent shape that they need in the bodice. So that's going to come out of the dress kit. But in the shirt kit, it's what I call our dartless look. And if you think, I use this word camp shirt very loosely and liberally, but um, think of a camp shirt. It's got more fullness under the arm. Mm -hmm. It's got a deeper arm side and it has more ease. So where the dress kit has two and a half inches of ease in the bust line, the shirt kit has about five to six inches of ease. And in fact, I'll just back up a little bit here and show you the shirt that I'm wearing. You'll see that it doesn't have a bust dart in here. That's partly because I'm very small busted and I don't really need a bust dart in there. But um, anybody who is really, really full busted, I now have instructions in the shirt kit on how to add that bust dart because even, um, how do I want to say this? If you're if you're very full busted and you take a flat piece of fabric and hang it over the front of you, your bust, because you come out and then back in, is going to take the fabric and it's going to hike it up in the front. And so to get a really good fit in a flat piece of fabric for our full busted ladies, you really do need to put a dart in this shirt. And there are complete instructions in the instruction book on how to do that. And then also we have a um, very specific DVD tutorial called the shirt fitting course. And that's going to show you how to uh, draw the pattern off, how to sew it together, how to add a bust dart if you need to, and then how to do the, refit the fitting refinements. But um, so there are some major differences between the shirt kit and the dress kit. And another benefit of this shirt not having an, an initial dart or an, a dart initially is what I wanted to say is that it can also be used for men's shirts and so you'll see lots of design ideas within the shirt kit instruction book to sew for both men and women but the instructions are there if you need a dart on how to put it in and I will also just say with the shirt that I'm wearing right now this is our newest sew along and it's called the long tail big shirt. And that's what we have been doing all the video shooting for all yeah. today. And I've still got the sewing construction part of it to do. So that's why I'm, wow. I'm wearing this is because we were doing video shooting today. <laughs> it's a but lovely I'm shirt. Lovely. Um, I was yeah, wondering yeah. if maybe you could explain some of the things behind you as well. Because I imagine oh, I they're to... all made from the same kit. I want uh, that blue dress. <laughs> let's see. Are they all made from the same kit? Well, well, I mean, uh, your kits, I mean, just so people well, realize. Yes, how yeah, they're all made from the Sherfit Designs kits, yeah. and um, most of them are, are from the dress kit. And if you don't mind, I'm going to turn my back around here. The, the blue dress on that mannequin over on the side there, that is our little black dress. 
And that has kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, a funny story to it because one of the first sew alongs that I did was the little black dress. Well, when you're videotaping black, nobody can see what you're doing. And so <laughs> I had to find a comparable fabric and I happened to have this beautiful piece of wool crepe in my fabric wow. stash. And so that's how come it's now the little blue dress, but because it's LBD, blue is black in terms of the spelling of it. So it was, <laughs> it was really kind of interesting <laughs> to do that so long. And then I put a Dupioni silk uh, flounce at the bottom and the color match on that fabric was just perfect. And here on that one, it's been done from the dress kit and the bust uh -huh. start has been transferred from the side seam up into the neckline. I, I, you really can't see it because it's too far away there, but that's that one. And then on the taller mannequin where I have the um, yellow outfit, the um, waterfall jacket that I've got on there, that's also done from the dress kit. And you're going to find directions for that in, um, it's a fashion leaflet called the waterfall jacket. And then the tank top underneath uh, is also um, a downloadable fashion leaflet. And there the bust start's been taken from the side seam and moved up into the lower neckline. And then the pants, of course, are from the pants kit. And um, they're just out of a, it's a, a novelty cotton uh, denim, actually. It was really fun to sew with. And then the, um, my head, I guess, was in the way of that one before. The leopard uh, skin blouse there, that's also off of the dress kit. And the bust starts in the side, coming from the side, but you, you really can't see it because of the print and the blouse. And then over on this side, the um, first mannequin here is showing a princess line. I didn't mean princess line. It's showing the um, a sweetheart style of neckline and just some basic fitting darts to give the garment shaping. And then, um, and this actually, you know, in my, um, in the learning center, I have a number of free videos in the learning center and on designing. And the one with the sweetheart neckline is called the Kimberly blouse. This was um, a woman who uh, invested in Surefit Designs last Christmas. And she designed this style of blouse for one of her very, very first projects. She did a fabulous job of it. She posted it in our Facebook group. And um, so we decided that we were going to do a video and show everybody how to do it because the comments that she got was, oh, my God, this is stunning. And you've never worked with Sherpa Designs before. How did you do it? And so I asked Kimberly permission to use her name. And we call it the Kimberly Blouse. And in conjunction with her, I found out exactly the details that she did. And we put it into a free video that's now found in the Learning Center. So oh, that was a, uh -huh. a very fun project and stimulus from one of the customers. And that's why I'm saying I really do love to see what people are doing and their input. And then the next uh, garment that's on the mannequin there, the last one that I've got, that's uh, called the Caprizio Top. And this has princess lines that um, come all the way down into an asymmetrical hem. And then I've done some color blocking on that as well and did a, a mock style of cowl neck collar on this. And this is also an interesting, this is a sew along that you can find in, it's called the SoFit Academy online.com. And um, this one, it got the name Caprizio top because I didn't know what to call it. There were so many things going on. I had the cowl neck, I had princess lines, I had, um, the asymmetrical bottom and I had color blocking. So I went to my Facebook group and I said, okay, we're going to run a little contest here. I said, what do you think that this top should be called? And I got some very, very creative names, very creative names. It was really hard to choose, but Celeste Amaral came up with this name Caprizio. And I said, Celeste, what does this mean? She said, I don't know. I just made it up. <laughs> and she did. If you were to look up Caprizio, it means absolutely nothing. There is no word called Caprizio. And I thought, what a perfect name to incorporate all of these different design features 
and uh, honor her for her creativity. So yeah. that's how it became the Caprizio Top Sew Along. <laughs> nice. <Fabulous. laughs> We've been getting a lot of fabulous comments in the side. Yes, I noticed that. Yeah, Bonnie, Mandy, Carell, lots of people all talking mostly about how fabulous the system is and how great the customer feedback is. Oh, that's you must great. get that all the time, Glenda, because it sounds like you work really hard to make sure those lines of communication are open, whether it's Facebook, whether you're giving tips on uh, free live stream videos or videos on your, your, on your web pages, or it sounds like email as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. You know, I've been talking and I haven't been reading the comments. So I thank you so much, everybody, for all of your lovely feedback. That's just wonderful to hear that you're happy with the system and happy with our service. Well, I, and, it's, it's, I'm sorry. I was just gonna. I was just gonna say, if people are interested in coming on and asking Glenda a question too, uh, yeah. Myra probably has a couple more questions for her. But um, if you if you're interested in trying to come on camera and ask Glenda a question. Um, we would love that. Um, just let us know in the comments and we'll try to have you pop on occasionally. Like Crowdcast works best uh, to get on camera if you're using um, Chrome and uh, as your internet browser, you're on a computer. Um, but if you are if you have those things going for you and you want to ask her a question, come on. And if not, remember, you can ask a question down there. We'd love to ask Glenda for you. She is a wealth of information. Yes, most <laughs> Sorry definitely. to interrupt, Myra. No, no, that's okay because um, there's so many fosses to this beautiful lady. Oh my gosh. It's like, what do you ask her? <laughs> because they're <laughs> everything. So I, um, um, I actually saw a lot out there that was so interesting to me. And um, I know that your Sure Fit Designs and your um, so Fit Academy Online are organized very well and it's so easy to navigate. If, if you guys you. haven't been out there, um, you won't have a problem going through and finding what you need. It's truly that organized. She was so correct when she said um, it's um, actually organized well. That's an understatement because it is beautiful. But I have a question. In your opinion, um, What's the hardest thing about having an online business of this magnitude for you? Oh gosh, that's a real easy one. This this business is twenty four seven. Um, oh, yeah. Before um, before the internet, you know, as I said, we used to do a lot of traveling and we lived in an airplane. But we'd go to market, we'd share surefit designs with the market area, and then we'd come home and I'd rest. And then we'd get ready for the next market. There was no internet. And oh, wow. So now it's honestly between the emails and the phone calls, um, I am on 24 seven. And wow. it's really, really hard for me to get away. I have a fabulous office assistant, Kelly. And um, I, I, there's only so much you can leave to, to somebody who doesn't have the knowledge that I have. And so I'm answering questions and, and, and my husband will say to me, Glenda, why don't you leave it till tomorrow? And I say, well, because if I leave answering this question until tomorrow, tomorrow there's going to be five more questions True. and then I'm going to get behind and I'm going to feel pressured. So my, when, when a, when a question comes in, I usually try to answer it within the same day. And if it comes in at night, I'm answering it in the morning just because I know there's going to be more coming online. And, I, you know, I think of it if I was a customer and mm -hmm. I'm in the middle of sewing off or drawing off my body mm -hmm. blueprint and I have a question. Do I want to wait for three or four days to get a response yeah, yeah. to that question? Because yeah. here you are in the middle of your project and you want to move on. And so I do my best to communicate with people. So when you ask me what's the hardest thing about running a business like this, it's being on all the time. And, wow. you know, I do get tired and I got sick at Christmas time. And it's just, that's the toughest part for me because I want to be there for everybody. Aww. And um, so, but I still love it. <laughs> I still love it. And it challenges my brain. Oh, I'll tell you what. I do all of the um, technology for my websites. 
I just finished switching my website from a server where I'd been for, gosh, 15 years, and I moved it over to this new platform, which Don has already shown you, so that it could be more organized and easier for our customers to navigate and get around in. But I did it all. And I'm not asking wow. for in the back. The reality is I love the technology. And, you know, they say as we age, we've got to keep doing things that keep our brain active. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think mine's on like an overdrive. <laughs> so, and, and but that would be about the. And if I might just interject and say at this point in time, come September, I really am going to take a break, everybody. We actually <laughs> are going to go to London and um, we're going to deal or talk with our, our UK distributor, Judith Johnson over there. And we're gonna put on a presentation in the Birmingham area. And so the ladies over in the UK can certainly look forward to um, mm. me coming over there. And I really look forward to coming over there because we just have so many wonderful customers in the UK and it's gonna be fun. And I am going to be away <laughs> for a <while. laughs> Good for and you. And I will not be answering customer questions and I will not be answering your emails. We'll give you all kinds of warning ahead of time before I leave, but it's gonna happen in September. And then after we've worked with our UK dealer, then I get to go on my bucket list trip. I get to go on a river cruise. And oh, I'm so looking forward to it. <laughs> well, good for you. Oh, it sounds like we so almost need to clone you, Glenda. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Clone you, you my clone. husband has said, can we just clone you? <laughs> <laughs> is, is that part of why uh, I understand? you stand other reasons business reasons for having distributors but is that another reason why you, you have distributors you have them in there's uh uk and ireland uh south africa uh canada as well well and, and then uh, australia and new zealand yeah so is is that part of the reason because you said it's very important that those people that represent you also uh are there to help and have an excellent customer service as well is that because you can't clone you uh, what else can you do right and I am so um, glad that we have such wonderful ladies in all of these countries when they need to come here to the United States for training. And when they do during their, the, the corporate part of their training, one of the things that we stress is that the customer service has to be exemplary. They have to carry on the tradition that I have started um, because our customers expect it. And I'm so fortunate the ladies that I have got, I, I couldn't be happier with them because they are doing that for their customers in that area. They, they spend, my dealers spend a lot of time here learning from me and they come with their own specialized backgrounds and they all have their unique talents and skills. And um, when they get back into their home area and their home territory, they are actually helping to take the pressure off of me, which is wonderful because their, their customers will go to them for fitting help and for designing and selling issues. And then if my dealers don't know the answer to their question, then they come and they ask me. So I'm always willing to, to work with my, with my dealers. And I, I will tell you this, that Elsa B. Hearn uh, in South Africa, she was the first lady to approach us and say, Glenda, would you like to have an international um, distributor in South Africa. And quite honestly, that was not on our radar to, to do that. But um, Elsebe owns um, a Bernina dealership in a, a suburb of Johannesburg. And she said they have all kinds of ladies in South Africa who wanted fitting information. Mm -hmm. So Elsebe um, sought out Surefit Designs, contacted us, and we went ahead and subsequently did the training. And that was the beginning of our distributor program. And then the next one to uh, come after Elsevi was uh, Judith Johnson in the United Kingdom. And then last year we brought on Anna Espindola and she's in Canada. She's headquartered in Calgary. And then um, Martha Schuster 
is in Australia, and we're absolutely delighted to have all of these ladies. Martha, yeah. in fact, is starting her first fitting retreat on Thursday this week, and yeah. she has fitting retreats in January, February, March. I think she's got one in April, and um, then I think she had, did she tell me, May, June, and July, and almost every single one of them is full already. The ladies wow. in Australia, and she's got people flying in from New Zealand to come to her fitting retreats. So Martha's um, going to be one busy lady. <laughs> that's awesome. That is amazing. Yeah. And I think it's important to note, too, just for people who might be new, um, if you are wondering about any of the websites, um, and if you're watching it on YouTube, um, in YouTube, the information about any of the websites, as well as the, the websites for those distributors, so if you'd like to learn more, you want to find out about somebody in your area, you want to find out about those dates, you want to check out the free videos that you can find online on her website, you can go into the description on YouTube or if you're in Crowdcast up above where there's the three little men icon and then it says that sewing lab episode 89, Glenda Sparling of Sure Fit Designs and then there's a circles and upside down exclamation mark. If you click there, even during the show, after the show, whenever, all of the information and the links are there. Um, we just don't want you to miss out because there is a lot of, we could do three hours just on her website. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, and we don't have that time. We're already a little over. So I, I just yeah. want to make sure that you guys see that because that is another way to understand more about the things that she offers. And yeah, it's pretty impressive. When you look at it, it might look like uh, a couple kits and some videos, but when you, you, you just have to talk to Glenda for a few minutes and you understand what you're getting is clothes that fit properly in almost any design that you can think of because there's all the ones that she gives you and I am sure by the time you learn that, you can come up with other designs yourself as well okay. because she gives you all the tools that you need in your toolbox basically to make clothes that fit. And so, I have had customers say that they never in a million years dreamt that they'd be able to design their own clothing and not only their own clothing but their own clothing that fits. And again, that is so rewarding for me to have helped somebody grow and expand in an area of passion for them. And it's it's just great. It's it's super to see that. So yeah, they can become their own designer. But Don, <laughs> could I just could I just clarify the three oh, yes. major websites? Because we've been yes. talking about all of them kind of in a jumbly format yeah. here and I've been weaving in and out. But I just want to be really specific that the main website is surefitdesigns.com. That's the one that just got switched over from the old platform to the new one. And it's where it's where you're going to find links to everything. Thank you for putting that up, Don. So you'll find here um, our international, under the tab international ordering, you're going to see the links for our distributors. And then and there they all are. So you can just go to any country that in that you want to. And then the next tab to that says the SFD Learning Center. Now the Learning Center was a website we started maybe two and a half years ago. And that was my husband's idea, actually. He said, Glenda, should we have a website dedicated to all the videos that we're putting up on YouTube? Because right now I have over 200 videos on YouTube wow. Wow. and um, it was getting all congested in my regular website. So we started the learning center where here there is a video library and an article library. Uh, and <clears throat> excuse me. In the video library, it's set up like going into a library. When you click on that, you're going to get information. You're going to get it set up so that it goes to um, a major category. So like ET is the essential tools category. GI is general information videos. And then like D is for dress kit, P is for pant kit, S is for shirt kit. And so you go down and you pick the category that you want to focus in. And then you click that link and it takes you in to basically the library setting. So you can see they're all labeled and numbered and categorized for your specific viewing reference and information. And there are mountains of information in there. You just need to spend some time going through the videos 
and watching and seeing what's relevant to your specific needs. And then, so that's surefitdesigns.com and then the SFD Learning Center or Surefit Designs Learning Center. So those two came about. And then the last website we have is called the SoFitAcademyOnline.com. And this came about as a, um, um, a response to the need for people being able to see our DVD tutorials in a streaming video format because so frequently now when people buy um, a new laptop it doesn't have a, a DVD drive in it anymore right. or their tablets they don't have DVD drives and so um, how are we going to get our information and our resources out to our customers and it was actually Judith Johnson in the UK said you know one of their TV stations over there, Sky TV, said she, um, what they do is if you buy a physical DVD from them, you automatically, for totally free, get the streaming video version. And so we adopted that model. We set up this website called SoFitAcademyOnline.com. So now when somebody purchases a physical, DV, a physical DVD from me, like the introductory how-to DVD, inside that DVD package, will be a little sticker and it's going to give them the 100% discount code for going into the academy mm -hmm. and watching it either on their smartphone or their tablet. So now if you don't have a DVD player in your sewing room, all you need to do is take in your smartphone or your tablet. You've already bought the DVD from us. You're going to get the 100% discount code to go in and watch it for nothing. So that was the essence of why we started that video is to keep up with the times and to keep up with technology. And that's also where we now house all of our sew alongs where this new shirt, the long tail big shirt, it's going to be a sew along and it will be in the online academy. Wow. You must be one busy woman. Wow. Uh, <laughs> yes, we could have three shows just talking about Glenda, but um, we are running out of time, and we do have two questions. Two questions. Yes. Okay, Meyer, do you want to? Sure. Um, the first one here. Um, any plans for a fabric shop? Oh gosh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. That was a really simple answer. I am focused on <laughs> getting. And then the extension of that is designing and helping you ladies to create new designs. No intention for a fabric shop at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then the second question is, can we talk about the cost of the kits, pants and dress? Oh, sure. Absolutely. The dress kit is $49.95 and the pants kit is $37.95. And um, I can go down the list. The shirt kit is uh, $35.95. And um, the children's kits thirty three ninety five, and the men's instructional package is fifteen ninety five. And something that I should also um, mention, and I think I might have sent you um, photographs of this, Don. This is the designing stylus. This is what I call the key to the system. It is a unique tool that has on it all the curves of your body, and you use it with every single kit in the Surefit Designs line. This does not come with any specific kit. But we do have what we call combos. And so if you purchase a combo package, then you're gonna get the kit of your choice, a designing stylus, a how-to DVD, a roll of vellum, and um, a roll of vellum, and what else are we giving in these? And usually the designer's companion. But I've got all kinds of different combo sizes and packages, and they are all of varying costs and, and amounts and varying contents. So you're very welcome to, to uh, do that. But I wanted to show you this tool because you have to have that for any of the kits and drawing off because it's got all your necklines and armholes and hip lines and crotch curves and that kind of thing on it. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I couldn't put it up. It was actually, I didn't realize till now, it's a, a GIF, a GIF. Oh, that was a gift. Um, I didn't realize I sent you a gift. Yeah, yeah. I went to open it. I'm like, why won't it open? But okay. yeah, um, luckily you had one there to show. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, that's where the magic comes from. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that and Glenda. I know you're right. Do you have another question there? Because one thing I wanted to say was about people who sign up for our mailing list. May I do that? 
Uh, yeah, uh, we are quite over time, but yes, okay. I'd love to. All right. <laughs> when anybody signs up for our mailing list, particularly in the United States, they're going to get four free starting gifts. There is a t-shirt design, how to do a princess line design, um, the notions guideline, and with your first purchase of any kit or kit combo, you will receive the designer's companion as a completely free gift. Okay, so I did want to mention that. I didn't realize we've gone over an hour. My goodness, it's just the time flies. <laughs> really yeah, it does. It does. It really does. <laughs> it's been awesome. And I still have a lot of questions that I wanted to ask, but maybe next time if we get you to come on next again. Time. I'd love to come on. Yeah. That'd be fun. Oh, cool. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, normally we do a little bit of a community news, but I think we are quite over time yeah. today. We've taken up a lot of people's time. I would like to sh shout out to Mandy S. from New Zealand, who has been uh, talking with us. Um, wow. It, it's, neat uh, it's neat talking to people on uh, Facebook and things yes. about the show, and when they're enthusiastic about watching, it's great. <laughs> yes, it's been an awesome show. Thank you so much, Linda, for oh, my joining pleasure. us. It's been Myra, wonderful. It was really an honor to meet you tonight. I, I oh, have talked to you before, and it was lovely to meet you. And you too, well, Dawn. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, well, um, I think that's it. We probably need to wrap up. I'm sure Glenda has a lot to do, and hopefully we can have her back sometime in the future, and maybe we can get all the other questions answered that we didn't get to. So again, thank you all for joining us tonight, and we hope to see you all again back here next Tuesday on That Sewing Blab at 7.30. Have a great night, everyone. Good night, everybody, and thanks so much for watching. It's been a lot of fun. <laughs> night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.